Okay. So it should be streaming. Um, yeah, it says I'm live. Let me just see here. Um, uh, so I'm trying to find the uh, the sharing link because it's on my channel. Um, what you said? Uh, you use OBS? Yeah, just like a streaming software. Oh yeah, that plugs into different uh, streams and stuff. Yeah, you, know, you got to realize I'm 30 minutes, 45 minutes behind on my coffee today, so. <laughs> That's fine. Right. Um, let me get, uh, here we go, okay. So, here's just a kind of generic channel. in Skype. And I'll just share my screen because that looks like the easiest way to do it. Okay. Do I need to do anything with this channel? Uh, I mean, you can just like share it or something um, okay. in a little bit. But yeah, for now, um, let me just make sure one last thing. Okay, cool. So we should be pretty good, um, for the live stuff. And then the, yeah, so I guess we can just start talking basically. Cool. I'm kind of switching between, so I have my Skype. I don't know if you can see it on your end. Yeah, I went to that. I went to that uh, YouTube stream, and then I uh, I just switched back over to Skype because I was getting kind of doubled up on the audio. Okay. Because then I think this one switches to me, maybe. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, I don't see the any kind of screen share or anything. Okay. All right, cool. That should be pretty good. Awesome. Let me just check something here. Okay, perfect. Okay, cool. All right, so my camera's got this autofocus on it too, so I keep noticing it. I guess, um, I, I guess I should just stand yeah. still because it keeps like <laughs> exactly. So yeah, it's just been crazy over over where um, where I am in Columbus. You're in Seattle, and yeah. uh, you know so other sides of the United States. Um, but it's always good to connect and see what's going on, what you're focusing on, what I'm kind of working on too. Um, but you know, just like a recap of what kind of stuff you're working on right now and like a little about your company, just go, go on, go for it. Yeah. So, uh, we are very similar to you. We're a digital marketing agency. I know you focus, uh, I think exclusively on local, uh, SEO type work. Yeah. Um, but, um, and we've kind of, kind of fallen into that bucket as well. Mm -hmm. uh, our niche that we serve, uh, is really the, med spa, uh, beauty, health, wellness industry. Um, but, you know, we've got, like everyone else, you get clients outside of that. But actually, most all of our clients right now are in that industry, which is great. Yeah. And uh, we've just been kind of ramping up over the last year. It was a big transformation from, uh, I mean, a complete domain name change. Uh, we used to, I started off this company almost four years ago as a social media marketing agency and it really kind of morphed into a full digital agency. So we did a name change. Oh, wow. uh, of course, you lose everything. All your SEO is gone out the window for the most part. Um, did you change? Uh, did you have like an old domain or anything? Or was it all new, like domain and everything? Yeah, old domain. I mean, it was. Uh, we changed the, the name of the company. We changed the domain. I mean, pretty much everything. So it was basically went back to square one. Wow. But, uh, but it's kind of refreshing. And, you know, I... Um, 
I kind of like doing stuff like that. I, I'm the guy that years ago would just uh, tinker around with my computer, and I was like, I'm just going to wipe the hard drive. Yeah. And, uh, start all over again. <laughs> fresh. So, uh, but anyway, we, uh, you know, just kind of just building things out from there. Uh, what we've been working on a lot, and I say we, there's just a, a three of us right now, and I'm the, the primary. There's two other people I, I, I kind of share some responsibilities with and tasks. Um, but I do, I'm the bulk of the, the company uh, yeah. for the most part. But so I've been uh, really working right now on fine tuning some processes that I've been building through Process Street uh, because uh, probably in about another month or so, I'm going to be really pressing hard to, um, to build an outsource team and nice. start, uh, start outsourcing a lot of the work. And I want to have all these processes just fine tuned where they can just go down, check them off. They've got all the, the information in the, um, you know, the, the rules and stuff that they need to follow. Um, so that's kind of the main thing right now. Uh, I'm also uh, getting ready to launch uh, an email marketing campaign, uh, really focused on our niche market, which is the med spa industry. Okay. So I spent about nine months building up connections on LinkedIn and, and other places. And I've got about 1,200 uh, connections to MedSpa owners throughout the country. Nice. So I'm going to be pushing out on that pretty soon. So I've just been doing a lot of work over the last year, probably the last three quarters of last year, to prepare for uh, Q1 of this year. Mm. Uh, we'll launch yeah. a campaign hopefully also the next month, uh, which is why I need to build that outsource team. And um, and then, yeah, then just start uh, building up our client list. You know, we just have a handful of clients right now. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, really want to kind of build that out. And another thing that I launched a couple, a uh, few months back was a social media um, growth plans. So we were doing this for some of our clients either. We, we use this, uh, this kind of uh, software that got kicked off of uh, most of the platforms years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but it still works. So we've been using that uh, for social media growth. And I just decided to start offering that as a service. So we've got about seven clients on that right now. Cool. Um, and basically what it does right now, it pays for all the toys, all the software. Yeah. And then some. Um, Nice. So I'm looking to kind of build that out also a little bit more. And then with this outsource team, just use them or someone there to, uh, to kind of manage all of that. Because it doesn't take about much time. It takes With seven clients on that, I spend about maybe 20 or 30 minutes a week. Okay. So it's a pretty good uh, revenue generator. But, you know, I, with someone else doing it, I would say we could build it up and get 20, 30 clients. Wow. Um, so that's kind of a – that's another thing that we're uh, – focus on them and I, that's been part of our, our regular website right now it's not in our menu but um i'm building two new websites right now for instagram growth and twitter growth and maybe doing for linkedin as well okay so, so yeah so i have a lot of things like that going on right now um uh, what else yeah it's probably that's kind of the bulk of it nice that sounds great to time too. yeah yeah for sure i'm uh tweeting this uh live stream for a moment, okay. just to share it out. Um, and uh, Facebook and other places. What's your uh, time uh, today? I got, I got plenty of time. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, good. Um, let me get to my page. I'm just sharing these links. Cause it's good. I like I like what you're saying, and I think we'll get into some cool stuff. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to this year. I think it's gonna be great. How was uh, 2018 for you? It was okay. You know, I'm making more than I did when I graduated from high school, so that's good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's good. What I did when I graduated from college. <laughs> mm -hmm. time. Yeah, it's been uh, – my wife's been really patient with me. Um, you know, I started this company, and I was like, just, you know, hang in there. It's going to come. But yeah. Just, as you know, there's just a lot of stuff to kind of take care of, little bitty things that uh, you don't think about uh, just if you want to grow, if you want to scale. And that's been the hardest part, you know. And I, I just kind of put a plan together at the beginning of last year on what I needed to do and – it's like the money can wait. I'm just going to build this up. And I, we've gained clients. You know, I just got a, a new client uh, uh, about a month ago. And then they have a sister company that's going to uh, 
probably come on board with us again or here pretty soon. I mm-hmm. just had a, a chat with them the other day, and they said everything looks good on the proposal. That's we always good. With another uh, niche specific uh, med spa um, company that's going to be just starting out. It's a dermatology clinic, but they're kind of branching out and going to start a med spa too. So got a call with them uh, next week. Nice. And, um, so you fo- you focus on uh, the the medical and spas industry, or yeah. So I, I really uh, this was another uh, thing that I did last year. I did a lot of research on this. I really wanted to focus and niche down. And I was like, well, I've got experience working in the healthcare industry, um, so maybe that's something that, that would be good. So I did a little, just kind of high level research. So yeah, that that looks good. Yeah. And I was like, well, I need to really niche down more than that. So I actually did some. Um, some surveys, send some surveys out to people on LinkedIn and other areas, and uh, with some specific questions that were going to help me determine, you know, which niches were viable for me. And um, you know, I looked at naturopaths, uh, acupuncturists, uh, mental health, um, general uh, medical practices, med spas, uh, plastic surgeons. Already knew was, uh, you know, there's a lot of money to be made in that. Yeah. Uh, and they're kind of into the SEO world. So uh, but anyway, the one that came back just like. It checked every box was med spa. Oh, yeah. Uh, so that's why I decided to do that. And I actually used to have a client. In fact, they're going to be coming back on board with you pretty soon. But um, it's a medical clinic. But they, they're down in L.A., so they do a lot of those injections and Botox injections and microneedling mm-hmm. and, uh, and things like that. So they do some med spa services. And they also have an organic skincare line they sell, which is what I was helping them with. Okay. So I've got some experience in there. And, I was, you know, it's, it's kind of a fun field to work in. Yeah. Plus, a lot of those people are on Instagram, and I hadn't done too much work on Instagram before for the social media marketing. Yeah, Instagram is a fun one. I mean, it's uh, right now, Buffer just announced that they're doing a new uh, platform change so you can actually do updates from Buffer, which is cool. Before, you always had to, like, it would say schedule and then remind you to publish, and now it can just do it, which is great, and that saves a lot of time. And, uh, you know, Instagram's really big, obviously. I have a, a client that um, actually is a partner that's in Columbus, and they do stuff with, like, Botox, and, and they have some plastic surgeon, one in Miami, one might be in L.A., I can't remember. Um, but that's something where maybe I would throw it your way, actually, because um, I, I generally just focus hyper-niche, like, in Columbus, so like central yeah. Ohio pretty much. And that's like yeah. where I focus on. But are you, you do, you kind of open up with the U.S. as long as it's kind of medical is what you're looking at? Yeah. Yeah. And ideally when you're dealing with med spas, you don't want to deal with multiple um, practices like that within the same area. Because um, mm-hmm. you can against yourself basically. I mean, because they're, they do, most of them offer very, very similar services. So it's like, yeah. I just don't know if I'd feel good, you know, <laughs> ranking some for one client for some specific keyword. And then right down the street, you're, you got another client that's you're ranking for the same keywords. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So you, know, you, there's, there's, I have to be selective. Yeah. Like I don't, my wife is a massage therapist. So I just basically corner her market with that and let her, let her do what she needs to do. But I wouldn't take on other massage therapist locally because of that. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's that's one of the one of the things that as of right now, I haven't looked to it being a problem, but that is a good like SWOT analysis of my business in the future where say I have so many, you know, like a few lawyers or something, I have to limit the businesses I take on, you know? And so that can be a tough one. There, there are quite a few um, there in the past, there have been like developers and stuff that have contacted me and, you know, I can't just take them all on unless they're in a different industry. Yeah. Yeah. And lawyers, you know, they, you have different types of law practices Mm -hmm. Um, and med spas, you know, some of them offer different services, but they're pretty much the same thing. Yeah. So it's, it's really, you know, you don't want to, I just don't think ethically it's right to, to be, selling the two in the same area yeah um makes sense uh, something else yeah we actually you just you know reminded me of something you were asking me about like what we're working on is i'm, I'm partnering up with another marketer he runs a small agency in baltimore and 
uh, we're actually developing a lead gen company and we're going to focus also on the med spa industry. Cool. So, uh, there's a lot of opportunity in that industry for SEO. Mm -hmm. Probably shouldn't be saying that because a lot more people look into it, but, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of opportunity for keyword to rank keywords fairly easily. Yeah. And I think generate some really good traffic, you know, targeted traffic for people. So that's why we came up with this lead gen, um, concept as well. So we'll basically just be collecting, uh, leads for people and then, then uh, selling them to med spas and other uh, facilities like that. Okay. Yeah. So for me, uh, 2019 or 2018 was good. Um, I, you know, grew my business and that was a lot of fun. Um, I think I, ex I expanded my reach into other areas too. um, figured out my portfolio, like made that solid. And then now in 2019, um, I'm looking for, and, and I achieved my goals for 2018, which were like to get a certain number of clients and like add them to the list, which was great. Um, and then for 2019, it's, it's similar goals, basically, you know, keep threading the needle, adding more clients. Um, I think I wanted to add five in January, which would be great. Um, and so I have like three that I'm looking at now already to sign up. Um, so I, you know, right. hopefully that'll, hopefully those will, those will happen either way. I might get actually, yeah. So three might be four now. Um, so that's cool, but you know, it always takes time. And those yeah. are clients that have been interested like early December, um, maybe late November. So it's been a little while, but now is kind of a new, a new time to, to push that. Um, yeah. but I mean with, you know, like today, it goes, it goes up and down, as you know. Um, today, it was snowing horribly in Columbus, Ohio. And so there, were, there was like this thin layer of ice over everything. And mm. I was supposed to have a meeting today with a new client, but that had to be moved because school was canceled or school was delayed. So it was an early meeting and then that stuff had to change. And then I noticed like business owners in general, when it gets snowy or when there's like issues like that, they meetings get rescheduled, you know, things get moved. So you have to adjust, you know, your, what you're going to do and then try and figure out a time that works again. So, um, that's just something that kind of, you know, is frustrating with, with winter in, in Columbus in particular, but, yeah. um, for the most part, things have been pretty good. Otherwise, um, today was just a crazy day as you know, like trying to get the, the technical stuff working. Then I had, yeah. I had that meeting, that I mentioned and just trying to contact people um, has been slow because I think everyone is like around here is just like, doesn't want to, doesn't want to do stuff if they don't have to, because again, yeah. the, the roads are kind of dangerous and stuff like that. But um, that stuff will go away and then, you know, the weather will, will change and whatnot. Um, so I am excited for 2019 and I, my big thing was figuring out goals and what to accomplish because that's something like that'll just take me writing it down on paper, figuring out my sales goal. I'm reading um, some good books on sales in particular to kind of get motivated again. Um, I have a question for you. I don't know if you've noticed this, but like in the new year when 2019 happens, it's almost like a reboot where yeah. some of the clients, they might, or they might like it, back into it or serious again, or they might not have as much motivation. It might be all over, but, um, I kind of noticed that I think there's that we finished like with 2018. And so there is like this reboot period. What have you noticed with clients in 2019 right now? Yeah. I mean, it's the same thing. I've had two former clients reach back out to me and, uh, like, yeah, let's talk again. Um, I mean, it's just in, Q4 is always tough for any business. I mean, mm -hmm. they closing out the year, and especially if you, there's any e-commerce involved because of the the selling season and everything. But um, yeah, yeah, I think that's kind of the same thing. People are just like, okay, we made it. We're done with that year. Let's let's get on to the next. And what do we need to do to grow? I think they also start looking at their goals and what they're trying to accomplish and start thinking about, you know, how they're going to get there. Yeah, and then if you did a good sales job to them, and then you pop back in their mind again. Um, I actually had one client get back in touch with me though, uh, and I'd love to work with them again. And I, 
I did a little research on their site because this would be for SEO work. I was doing social media stuff for them before. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they had gone out, I guess, and bought some um, backlinks. So uh, I, look, I, yeah. I don't know if you use SEM Rush or what tool you use, but um, yeah, I, like I that plugged tool. them into SEM Rush and I saw they had 13.8 million backlinks. Wow, jeez. Like, uh, that's not very natural. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. every single one of them is from overseas. Oh, so, wow. Uh, so that's one of those, uh, I'm like, I just don't even know if I want to touch it. So how did, have you looked that far with them or how did that affect what what you've noticed? I mean, did it affect their SEO or what, what was the deal with that? Not yet. Not yet. So I, what I did, um, I actually did a little work for them last spring. I was doing social media marketing. I said, let me, I was trying to talk them and let me do the SEO because it was a lot of opportunity. And I, they let me do like uh, a couple articles for them, just kind of work through the articles and, and make them SEO friendly. And I did. Mm-hmm. And then like um, two months later, we parted ways and um, I reached out to them in September of last year because when I plugged them into um, SEM Rush, I noticed that their traffic had gone from like 10 organic search hits a month up mm-hmm. to about 650. Wow. And it's like, well, that's great. You know, they've yeah. been doing something. And then I dug a little deeper and realized that 90, I think it was 98.6% of their traffic was coming from that one article that I did for them. Oh, wow. Um, which was amazing. I was like blown away. Yeah. And so, um, and so of course I'm like, I got to reach back out to these people. So I ran a little report and sent it out to them. That's when we kind of got back in the conversation again. And then they were like, well, we just have too much going on right now. Yeah. And at that time they didn't have all those backlinks. Oh, okay. Um, but I guess they, like a lot of people, they're like, well, you know, he's, cause I kind of told them then is like what I, what it would cost yeah, uh, for the monthly thing. And then I think they just said, well, let's just see if we can find another way to do it. I mean, let's just get some backlinks. Yeah. Cause that was one of the things when I had sent them some information, I said, you know, we'd work on your backlinks. They probably just went out and paid a fiber guy, you know, $50 or whatever. Yeah. yeah. 13.8 <laughs> million backlinks show up. And, uh, the problem is, wow. uh, the bottom is going to fall out of that floor eventually. Uh-huh. Because those are all those backlinks are not relevant. In fact, I clicked on a couple of them. They would go to like a file system, like a CGI bin folder or something like that. Wow. Um, so they will drop out, and uh, it's going to hurt them. I mean, I I've never even heard of that before. How to fix that? Uh-huh. Uh, you know, other than just literally just buying a new domain and start from scratch. Wow. Did uh, that did that help them in the short term organically? It hasn't, I don't think, because they just did that, and their traffic is actually, it's, it's. I think it was up last I look, it was up like two percent. Oh, so wow. they haven't seen over the last couple months. So yeah. they haven't seen a boost in all their traffic boost came last spring. In fact, when they reached out to me last or week before last, um, they said that um, you know it looked like they were falling a little bit in some of their rankings. Yeah. So that's the way they felt. So uh, I think it's going to eventually damage them and could get them penalized. I mean, because yeah, mean, definitely 13.8 million backlinks. You know, if 99% of them become toxic, I yeah, mean, you're pretty much dead. <laughs> yeah, that is. And then and then trying to spend all that time. I mean, you just yeah. can't. You just yeah, can't no like get get out of that. So I charge like ten thousand yeah. dollars. Hire like you know ten people to work with me. Yeah. So without giving away too much. When you said that you know one of the articles increased traffic, was that just something they approached you, or did you kind of go to them saying, "Hey, I have this idea for an article," or you know it was related to their industry or whatever? Yeah, as I mentioned, I was doing uh, social media marketing for them, and then um, they asked me to fix a couple things on their website. They have a Shopify site, and I went in ah, and I, yeah, I yeah. fixed it and did some work for them, just little stuff. And I was like, you know, I should just do a little more keyword research and that's what I did and I I found a couple keywords that I thought would rank really well mm-hmm. and I actually had one r- article written for them um, based it was kind of to support to this other article that I said hey there's a lot of opportunity here because of the keywords uh, I thought there was good volume mm-hmm. and it wasn't a lot the um, the competition level wasn't all that high okay. so I just said hey would you let me just do this and they agreed and I, it was basic stuff you know reworded some of the 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 sentences in there, yeah. did some internal, external linking, things like that. But mm-hmm. um, I mean, it's a good example that SEO does work. Now, were they converting after that? I don't know because I don't know what they were doing basically yeah. for conversions. Well, this is this is a good point. Like for conversions, 
in general because um, I have several clients that are they basically have not the best websites um, you know they've worked for a number of years and it, they kind of know it's time to upgrade that sort of thing like they've had these sites for multiple years and they're just kind of old and so we're seeing the conversions um, like you know clicks and everything they're getting to the site the ads are working because I do a lot of Google ads and people are liking you know the the idea almost of what of what they have and then they might get to the site and then they could have you know fairly high bounce rates or drop-offs um, because really the sites are pretty old and I've shown the data you know to the customers like they'll come to me and say we love our site or we want to keep our site which is kind of like a defense, meaning they know that they need to change. Right. And, and I'm just like, yeah, that's fine. I'll, I can work with it, you know, and yeah. I do. And then I'll show them like the data and be like, here's, here are the results. You know, like um, people are clicking, people are going, people are looking at stuff, but they're not buying or they're not, you know, staying or converting. So what do yeah. you see? Do you see that like with websites and what, what do you do? in those scenarios. Yeah, I mean, those are great scenarios to be in. Um, I think when you're with a new client or even a potential client, because it's pretty easy when you can talk to them most of the time to explain to them, hey, it's it's not just about getting people to your site, you know? Because mm-hmm. uh, that means nothing. It's kind of like uh, building up your Twitter account just for to have connections. Yeah. You know, you got to do something with them. Um, so then you can, you could suggest things like, you know, uh, a pop-up or, you know, or something like that, or more calls to action or, or placing their calls to action in a different section. And there's a lot of tools you can use. You can hook up to their site, like a hot jar. So you can see where people are actually scrolling on their site mm. where their mouse is going. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can do some A-B testing. So those are good opportunities for SEO people and web design. Cause we do web design as well to say, Hey, let's just try this out. You know, let's, let's put this on here and, and do some testing to see if uh, it's going to increase your conversions. And, you know, probably nine out of 10 times it's going to. Um, yeah. But yeah, the, in the, the site, it, it's another problem, you know, I see also with websites and, and businesses is they, they want a really nice looking site. Mm-hmm. But, and that's great. You know, if it's just an informational site, that's great. But if you want to convert people, you know, it needs to look nice, but that's not the most important thing. You have to have the right tools on your site to get people to convert. Yeah, um, and that's something that you know you got to explain that to them and show them because it's it's great to have a site, but who cares if it's not doing anything for you? Yeah, so with all that you mentioned uh, Shopify before, and I have a few yeah. clients that either have Shopify or migrating to Shopify in particular because I think they've seen like what Shopify can do. Um, you know, it's a good platform, and there are some that use like Clover and some others that they've had limitations with and problems with. Um, so do you do much with Shopify or what's your experience what? with Shopify? Oh, um, yeah. So I've worked with just two clients on Shopify mm-hmm. and um, not working with anyone right now. And it, it's a pretty good platform. I mean, I, I like a lot of things about it. I mean, for SEO, it's not the best, but you can do it. Mm-hmm. Um, you just got to go through And same thing with Squarespace and there's areas where you can inject code. I mean, if they're local, you know, for um, your um, your structured data and things like that. Yeah. Um, but they're they're pretty solid platforms, I think. Um, I don't. We don't promote. We don't say, hey, we'll build you a Shopify site. I just wouldn't want to get into that that much because um, yeah. I know uh, one of the sites we're looking at. I just this, they had somebody custom do it, and there was just a lot of like JavaScript they were adding, and and, um, and that's just mm. not something we really focus on. Yeah. But um, I've got another. Actually, I do have a client right now who has Shopify, but it's I. They have two sites. They have their main site, which is actually on Squarespace. We've had a lot of issues with that. Uh, they're having a new site built because uh, they're going through a major transformation right now. But then they have a Shopify site for their product line. So they do services and products. Hmm. And they're um, an Ayurvedic clinic. So, oh, uh, yeah. It's interesting. Ayurvedic. Ayurvedic, yeah. Yeah. So um, I had uh, with Shopify... Um, it's been going well. I'm doing a migration with one of my clients and might do another one. Um, so wait, this might be actually, I think, so a few of my clients have light speed also, which yeah. is good for just like the e-commerce side. Um, and for them, like as a store and stuff like that, 
it's pretty easy to use. I don't think the SEO is very good at all with Lightspeed, at least from what I've seen. Um, Shopify has more options. And I've actually had from like SEO out of the box more success with just Wix than like Squarespace. Yeah. Um, yeah. People that have Wix sites, I because I have quite a few clients that have Wix sites and that's totally fine. You know, like I can always do stuff with Wix. Um, and I noticed that for the most part, they're usually ranked pretty well already um, with their with their site, which is pretty pretty interesting out of the out of the you know kind of cookie cutter type ones uh wordpress is my preference overall but could just because you can do anything seo wise with that but like uh squarespace i have one client that is a developer that uses squarespace and his site um you know it's really it looks really good but the seo wise you know there's just a lot that needs to be done on it yeah. and i don't think that for whatever reason it's not um, SEOing as well as like some other sites. Have you noticed uh, similar things or? Yeah, I mean, my client actually, it's on the Squarespace site. They do okay. They get a decent amount of traffic, but Squarespace is weird because like you'll create a homepage, you know, have these different sections. And um, when you do like, if you do a, a search, it's, you know, like in GUI to site colon and then put your URL in, mm -hmm. and it'll give you all the pages. Well, those different sections on the, uh, the, square pa the Squarespace homepage show up as individual pages on that search like that. So it's weird oh, the yeah. way it does. I don't, I don't know how much that affects SEO because my client is ranking for some terms from that homepage, uh -huh. which is good. Yeah. But it's just a, it's weird the way it's set up. Uh, but this client, you know, they had, um, um, they had the site looking like they wanted to, so they had some like multiple H1 tags because they wanted the certain text to be bolder, oh, and yeah. bigger. Yeah. And their uh, they didn't have like their main um, their main topic or term wasn't even an H1. I think it was an H2. Okay. So I was like, well, I can do this. I've just write some CSS for you, and I'll make the H you know the H2s larger. We'll use those H2 and the H1 smaller, so it looks yeah. the same, but you've got the SEO right. functionality. And the way Squarespace works, like if it's the home page, you have to, it, it's like separate. You can, it's weird. You can write, in, inject this code, uh -huh. and it'll cover all the pages except for the home page, which is uh, okay. so, which is fine. This is on the home page. I'm like, I'm just going to do this on the home page. Yeah. So I injected the code on the home page. And then periodically, not all the time, but periodically, you'll go to another page and you'll see that like the text is huge where yeah. it shouldn't be. Yeah. So it's transferring over. But all, then when you refresh the page, it goes back to normal. It's right. just strength. That um, is, so and, so you know, I've kind of noticed that. that kind of thing with uh, another client of mine, a Smug Mug. So they're a photographer, and stuff like that. Um, it's very limiting, uh, and you know, we I ask them all the time. You know, can I do this? Can I do that? Like their support, and usually the answer is no. <laughs> like we, no, we don't have that. We can't do this. Sorry. And then there's a there's they have like thousands of pages that are created by Smugma yeah. from all these images and it's just it's a real big yeah. mess. But luckily, I've done some things, you know, just optim just kind of almost the basics to intermediate type stuff that has worked really well for them to be a commercial photographer in the top listed in our area. But I really don't think it's been that big a help with Smugma. <laughs> Um, so some are just dreadful, just like yeah. awful to do that stuff. So it's been, it's, you know, it's a learning process as you know. Um, yeah, I, I got a guy I partner up with and he just keeps telling me that he does just custom websites. That, so he doesn't touch sites for under like, you know, five, $7,000. Wow. Um, uh, but he keeps telling me, he's like, you need to get in, just set up a Wix site and start playing with it because he is, the platform is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's like for people that are, you know, want to build sites for under a thousand dollars or whatever. Yeah. He's like, that's, that's something that'd be really easy for you. And he goes, it's pretty flexible. So I need to get in and do it. I just, it's just another thing to put on the plate, you know, to learn. Yeah. I mean, Wix, Wix is good. I've used a lot of different ones and, it's easy to, once you get into it, to try different things and test out all that stuff. Um, Squarespace, you know, it's a, it looks pretty, but that's yeah. kind of it. There's nothing behind it. it. 
Yeah. It's like yeah, a Kardashian. I'm not, too, I'm not too thrilled with it. And Shopify is okay for e-commerce. And, yeah. Uh, and they've got some decent integrations with some um, CRMs and market automation tools, which is another thing that, you know, we talk about conversions. It's great to get people to convert, but what do you do after that? So one of my previous clients was, you know, they were like, oh, we're going to just start sending out a quarterly newsletter. I'm like, yeah. And they're in e-commerce. Yeah. E-commerce. I'm like, that isn't going to get you nothing. Yeah. You know, you need some market automation. You need to drip uh, messages to these people. You know, it takes nine, ten times before people mm -hmm. uh, are going to purchase again. Yeah. And so uh, there's just so much you can do with that. So that's kind of like our, our focus is in what I – this plan, you know, it's like the SEO work, get them there, work on ways on your website to convert them, and then – close these people with yeah. market automation tools. And that's, a, we started using uh, active campaign uh, uh -huh. probably about seven months ago. And I've been super pleased with it. I've used a lot of tools like that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we were using autopilot HQ before that, which was awesome. There's just no real CRM functionality in it. Okay. Um, I haven't you know, heard of uh, active campaign. What is that? Yeah, it's a market automation tool. It's like a um, kind of a, a little, more mini version of an infusion soft or something like that mm -hmm. so it's a crm tool but you can set up uh, campaigns and automation so like right now you mm. fill out a form on our site yeah and it'll put you in a certain drip uh, campaign and um what i've done i've done a couple campaigns already and this is what i'm getting ready to launch here hope in the next month or so is uh reaching out to people uh, either via LinkedIn or even you can do it on social, drive them to a landing page. Yeah. If those interested who will download your lead magnet will then be put into this automation sequence. And before I did it, I had like three lead magnets in the sequence. It went on over a three week period. So it, it dripped them something, sent them an email mm -hmm. and they were all related. So I had all these things were related. And then of course the, the last message it went out would be uh, to try to get them on the phone. I got a couple of people on the phone, which was cool. That's cool. Uh, yeah. Cool test campaign but i actually like building stuff like that but it, it kind of completes the puzzle you know you've got yeah. your SEO work you get people to the site you convert them and then you work with them you nurture them until uh you can hopefully convert them and if you don't convert them that's fine uh you know you then they go they're automatically segmented because you can segment lists with these these automated automation tools um pretty wow. easily but then they go into maybe a future campaign mm -hmm. you know and nice. um, so anyway, that's that's kind of, you know, uh, what I like doing is building what I just refer to as a, a digital marketing system. You know, don't really just I mean, some people just want SEO, but I get them in the door with the SEO or something like that. And it's like, well, let's take the next step. Let's yeah. do this. And that's really cool. Using, a lot of people are using MailChimp. Uh, MailChimp has some automation built in, but it's not as robust as tools like, you know, Infusionsoft, Entreport, mm -hmm. uh, Active Campaign. Uh, and even like drip is another one drip is a really cool tool but um yeah there's a lot of stuff out there like that and i've i've used so many of them and i basically just set up accounts and a lot of them over the last couple of years and tested them out not just to figure out which one worked best for us but also i want some familiarity with it for clients but because i never go in with the cookie cutter like program and say this is what we'll do and here's the tools we're going to use it's it's always let's evaluate your needs and let's find the right tool for you. Like nice. um, one potential or one client I have right now, they're looking at uh, at changing. They're actually looking to use Salesforce. Yeah. Um, yeah. But Salesforce has a pretty good integration with uh, Autopilot HQ. So it's like, don't use Salesforce's market automation stuff. Let's let's look at using something else that I'm familiar with that also I know works really really well, and it's got a pretty deep integration. Um, so I'm glad I used that tool for like six months because I. <laughs> Now I feel comfortable with it. I can set it up in no time. So you sell that, uh, like two clients, then the automation yeah. and whatnot, and building it. Or? Yep, I don't have any client using right now, but there's two that I'm I'm very soon to be talking to because we're kind of like we're getting traffic to their site. We're starting to get some conversions. I mean, one of them just had some people start reaching out to them. I was like, and they have products they sell, service and products. This is that clinic. Yeah. Um, so it's like this is a great this is a great opportunity. Let's get some automation built in. Let's start dripping these people because they want to really start scaling. And their their goal is to move from a seventy five percent service base and twenty five product base. They want to flip it. Yeah. And, uh, over the next couple of years, a seventy five percent product is like you've got to have some automation tools set up. You know, you got to constantly 
connect with these people. Mm-hmm. You know, tell them about specials you have. Just stay that that top of mind awareness. Yeah. And keep in front of them. Because if you don't, they're just going to find somebody else. So why do you wait, or what's the method for waiting three weeks or so? You you mentioned that um, for kind of getting a call. You know, because that seems like a long time. Well, it wasn't. Uh, yeah, it was, but I I wanted to show value. So we had a couple of lead magnets. One of them was a um, was a, a guide to uh, SEO, mm-hmm. and then the next one was an SEO checklist. So it's like, here's the guide. This is the checklist that goes with it. So you're just basically nurturing these people, mm-hmm. um, and you can't just email them every single day. So you wait like three days one one week. You wait, you know, four days the next. Uh, uh-huh. You don't want to do it on the weekends. Uh, and you can set these tools up for to be very specific about that stuff. Um, but basically, you want to say, hey, I've showed you this value of giving these freebies. Hopefully, yeah. you got something out of it. And you know the reality doing SEO is when people start looking into like, Jesus Christ, this is a lot of work. You know, I don't understand any things. You mean I got to go buy like these tools and do this and this and yeah. spend 20 hours a week? And they just – they don't have the time and they're not the experts. And that's kind of the message we start in this, this art automation sequence. That's kind of the message we start, you know – pushing out you know at the very end in fact one of our articles talks about that yeah uh, you know it's like if you don't have time you know it, it might make sense to outsource and we have a on our website we have and i had a link to this too it's an roi calculator oh yeah kind of to see like you know if you right now you have 300 site visitors if you increase that to a thousand your conversion rate is this mm-hmm. you know that's is what it generates to so then they see a number like you know well i can make an extra seven thousand or eight thousand dollars a month and then when you pitch them at fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars or so, it doesn't seem so bad, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so anyway, so that's kind of then get them on the phone. So you basically it's like it's showing fruit or, or uh, some value to them at first, rather than saying, "Hey, let's just hop on a call." Yeah. Like I'm gonna give you these. It's kind of HubSpot's model. Uh, you know, they've been doing it for years. Uh, you know, you've probably been called by them if you downloaded stuff. Yeah, they give you a, a lot of free stuff, from what I remember. Yep. And then, yeah, and then it's kind of um, upping the, the sale from there, yep. I think. And then eventually, they're, you know, because through this sequence, uh, you know, you don't just, sometimes you don't just email them a link to the thing. You say, oh, here's, if you want to download this, you know, we've got a landing page for that. If you just visit here and file your information, you can download it. And then maybe on one of your forms, on the first uh, email or the, the initial one, you ask for first name and email address. And then eventually you're asking for a phone number. And these market automation tools, they're just updating the records in there. So eventually you've got a complete profile, and this is what HubSpot does. So, uh, hey, just need your first name and email address. And then mm. after a while, they're asking for your phone number, and then lo and behold, you know, you get a call from them. And that's happened. They've called me a number of times, but it's a great it's a great system, you know? Mm-hmm. So I I just, I've got other tools they use. Nice. I was thinking um, – Basically, just talking about like trends you think for 2019. Yeah. Um, so let okay, I'll I'll start on some. I know that the one of the big trends they always say is voice, and I've slowly but surely seen more voice searches and things like that throughout some of my campaigns where it would be okay, Google, where's this place and stuff like that. Um, so voice search and optimizing for that is is I'm sure one that'll keep going up and up. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's quite going as fast as people think. Um, no. I think there's still a lot of people. I mean, people do it like on their phone and stuff, but I, I don't think it's quite quite as fast as people think. I think people are still searching the traditional way, just on their phone all the time. And plus, there's that quiet personal thing where you yeah. don't like. I'm I was out the other day on uh, Ohio State campus, and I had to just set a timer. And I felt awkward just saying, set my timer for 10, you know, and there's yeah. people walking around me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like cold yeah. and stuff. So th- yeah. things like that, you just you just kind of want to be, especially I'm a Midwesterner, we like to be in our own space, like, you know, like yeah. quiet and we don't draw a ton of attention. It might be different on other places. So I think... No, Seattle's like that too. Yeah, I think part of it is like not... Yeah, not just screaming, you know, find me this thing, you know, and, and so people are still searching normal, but I know that trend's going to continue. Like there yeah. will be more voice for sure. Um, so that is a big one to, to get used to. I think another, 
Um, yeah. So what are, what are some trends? If there's anything that you have just, just pop in, you know? <laughs> yeah, no voice, voice definitely. And where I see it used, like what I personally use it the most is, um, when I'm in my car, cause I don't want to be yeah. holding my phone. I've got a holder and I'll just basically click the button and say, you know, find this. Yeah. But that's yeah, a good I, point. I know what you mean about saying things. I still remember the days when the uh, Bluetooth headsets came out. Mm-hmm. And you see some guys sitting there talking, you know, you're like, is this guy crazy or yeah. what? He's just like talking to himself. Right. You know, oh, how weird. Yeah. But, um, it's, it's always had a like weird that. vibe because of that. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. It never, never quite got through. So uh, it'll, it'll happen in several years. Uh, some other trends. Um, so just keep obviously going with SEO and backlinks. And for me, it's always been continuing old school white white hat stuff getting backlinks is always a good trend getting popular you know like pr articles and stuff like that just kind of hustling your business that's yep. an important trend um that is just continuing from what i see um so there's a there's a little uh what is it wednesday tornado uh test i don't oh, know yeah. if you hear that but that that's what we have here for some reason um, so yeah, what, what else do you think? And then I'm kind of sparking some in the back yeah, of my mind. No, definitely. Um, uh, uh, mobile friendliness of sites, I think it's just going to be, yeah. I mean, just seeing more and more mobile usage. Um, mm-hmm. also, um, that, that's I mean, a big overall, one. Yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll talk I mean, more on that. Too, keep, go. keep going. And then, uh, you know, for local, local SEO, I just think it's becoming more and more important people. If they aren't doing it, they're just going to be missing out on a lot. I, um, it was a webinar. It was a while back, but um, it was a guy. I can't remember what company. It was one of these big SEO companies. But he traveled to London for a meeting, and he basically was talking about how he was gonna. He did this test. He would hold his phone, and he would just walk, and he would search for something, and then he would go to the next block, and he'd search for the same thing, and all these different results popped up. And it is getting so like focused on like you know a block level, um, yeah. based on what your search is. And I think people really need to get that the right type of markup on their site. Uh, they really need to make sure that their local SEO is just like right on. And, and uh, dealing with schema, which has, Google has said that they, you know, it, it does influence their searches and stuff like that. It does help when you do it. I don't, I don't know if it is as big as maybe it's been said before, but it is still an important factor to have like local markup in your site um, because I don't think a lot of people do it per se. It's maybe more of an SEO person kind of thing. Um, yeah. but yeah, the local stuff, local stuff is really important. Um, and I've noticed, you know, just from doing tests from my office, from other client offices and stuff like that, how different results might be. And yeah. it's, it's very interesting to see that. Um, and it's, you know, getting very competitive in certain certain markets too. So it's yeah. always fun to just play around for me and see like what affects it positive or negative. And sometimes like I knew there were some things that I might do that would be risky, but you know, the, the search might go down in the SERP, but then, you know, we'll have to undo changes and go back up and stuff like that. It's just fun to like test and see what happens oh, yeah. for me. Yeah. It's, it's like building that. So I, I do enjoy that. Um, you talked about mobile usage. That is a really big one for my clients because, like I said, I have some clients with older sites and they have like mobile friendly sites, but they're not like the most mobile friendly. They work on mobile, but it could definitely be easier. And I've noticed the mobile, um, the mobile percent has gone up you know, in the oh, yeah. last year alone yep. for people just looking through mobile compared to, you know, desktop. So yeah. I don't know if that's a trend of just everybody with mobile phones or, or what it is. I, I hope that, you know, I, I personally like computers and I hope that it would kind of achieve more of a balance. So it's not just mobile. Um, yeah. I know that I'm the same way. Yeah. Google, Google kind of switched you know, with mobile first indexing. And I, um, I noticed that a few months prior, they really hit it hard, you know? Yeah. Um, and that had changed some things, I think, with some of my sites and stuff. And, um, and it's been fine. 
but it was def definitely a wake-up call, like it always is, to say, you know, you have, I mean, I haven't seen a number below 60% really for my clients that is mobile. Yeah. So what have you seen? Yeah, probably about the same. I mean, um, you're just seeing more and more of it. Um, and it obviously depends on the industry. Um, yeah. But, but I, yeah, I hope that, you know, it doesn't go all mobile also because I'm just a little old school with that. I like doing things on the computer and typing things out. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I, I, reporting for clients, I mean, it's pretty obvious that people are finding them. I mean, one of my clients is in LA and it's just like their mobile site visits far outweigh everything else. Yeah. Uh, what they're doing. Uh, no, like I said, it depends on the type of business. It's something, it's e commerce or, or something that, uh, you know, they need probably pretty soon. I mean, it's going to, you know, definitely need to focus on mobile. Um, and then you mentioned the, you know, mobile like friendliness or whatever sites. And I've got one of my clients, I mean, it's a good example. They had somebody to design their site, beautiful site. It's a graphic design company that did it. Looks really nice, but. They like their header image. They instead of doing an image with the text overlay uh -huh. on top of it, they basically put the, the text on the image, which does nothing for SEO. Yeah. But then when you look at the site <laughs> on the mobile, it shrinks the image. Well, it shrinks that text also, so you can't even see. It's like just yeah. minuscule yeah. text on there. So that's something we're gonna pitch them. It's like, hey, this site, even though it looks good, and yeah, it is mobile as far as like the way it uh, sizes down. Mm -hmm. uh, just not good. I mean, there's a lot of things. So, uh, so that's something I'm telling them because their site is. I mean, what they do is really. I mean, they could benefit from mobile. Most of their site visits are coming from mobile. How about uh, trends for like advertising, like you know, with with um, online advertising? Because I do that. Do you do much with with the advertising side? I or? don't. I no? don't. Okay. And if I get any, they're going to come your way probably because I okay. just don't do it. I, I actually steer yeah. people away from that, and I would just. My pitch is, hey, let's get the SEO, let's get the free or quote unquote free stuff done first. Yeah. Uh, make sure <laughs> Air you get quotes the volume. free. Yeah. yeah, and then and then you know let's let's talk about doing the advertising. I've done it for a few clients. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to focus on it because I look at advertising. I mean, it's great and it's effective, but I look at it as like a spigot, you know. And it's great you can get all the stuff, but as soon as you stop, mm -hmm. it goes away. And I'm like, let's build something for the long term first. Get this going. The advertising is getting to get more people there. And, you know, I don't know if this is true or not, but if you're paying Google to advertise, I just have this suspicion that they're going to be more friendly to you when it comes to the SEO stuff. You know, more site visits through ad uh, clicks and things like that. Uh, regardless, as more people come to your site and then they may search for you again in the future, I think it will, I mean, it does help with the SEO. Uh, but we just don't suppose, yeah, they say, they say no. Suppose, you know, Google and Bing and others, um, you know, the, the word on the street is, and from Google, is it's supposed to not do anything um, yeah. for your SEO. And I kind of hope that's true, you know, because there are people that spend a lot of money on ads and stuff like that. And from my experience, um, I think that I haven't seen anything that, that really was counter to that where, you know, I've been advertising with a company and then maybe they do some SEO. Um, there hasn't been any massive difference where it's influenced heavily with Google. Um, so that is fortunate, but I know that maybe in the past people have said that they advertise and it's helped their SEO. It could be chicken before the egg because they're getting more yeah. clicks, more links and that sort of thing. So in theory, it could influence some of the SEO because of that. Um, but yeah, the according to Google, it's not supposed to. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I but I agree with SEO. I I'm a big fan of doing SEO and just getting clients to be engaged and understand what's on their site, what they need to add, you know, keywords, all that important stuff. It makes their product better, makes their company better. They look within and try and figure out how to expand their products and. It's kind of exciting, you know, to build that stuff out. It is. So. It is. And when you come up with new products, uh, one of my clients right now, I mean, they're kind of coming to me. They're they're coming up, they're bringing out these new products. They're like, we want to, you know, we want to make sure that we name this product right. Yeah. And it's like, let's let's look at the SEO research, you know. Let's look at all the keyword research and, and what people are searching for. 
yeah. you capitalize on that. I mean, you don't want it to be some weird name, but just changing one little thing in their their name, uh, the product, it will help. You know, and it's that's, that's a that cool. that is a really good point. Um, when I started my business in 2016 or 17, um, I kind of you know, so it was a new business. It was a new like marketing company, and I chose the name Cow Abundant. I kind of looked around. There's nothing really out there that was like that. So that was that was really positive. You know, sometimes if you have a specific problem, pro, pro, project, or like a gym or something, you might want it to be localized, like Columbus Gym or something. You know, um, which clients have done before. But for me, it was I wanted a clean slate and just yeah. to go totally, totally the opposite direction. So that really helped. And it depends on what your mission is. You know, if you want to be out the gate and have awareness, you could, you can just still use like Columbus, you know, uh, massage or whatever. Um, but, or, or maybe a better one would be Columbus massage near me. Yeah. <laughs> I think there was, there was some local business that, that did that. Um, I've seen them around and it's just, it looks so weird. Like it, yeah. you know, but there are a it's few kind of, like those, kind of those URLs and people took advantage of that. Though. Yeah. There was one the other day I, I, I saw him, I saw him driving on the street. Yeah. And it was like that. It was like, uh, Columbus number one, like business, like, you know, yeah. and, and I was just like, man, they're really reaching, you know, for, yeah. for that stuff. If it works, that's okay. But I've noticed more with Bing, like because one of my clients has a one of my clients has a very obvious name that was basically um, so the idea was is basically live downtown Columbus was the name of his business, and yeah. it's a, it's a developer. So like that is as straight as you can be, you know, <laughs> like for the name, and then the domain name is that. I've noticed that Bing is more. Like, okay, yeah, we'll take what you got and, and put it on. And they they are old. That's old school, really. Yeah. You know, of like, yeah. I'm going to get the name and it, I'm going to be number one by just doing that. And so Bing still kind of does that. And he's had good tracking just doing that. But with Google, he's like at the bottom of the first page, even when yeah, you look up little, that they've name. They've a smarter algorithm, I think. Yeah. So, you know, the, that kind of old school old school way doesn't always work. Yeah, you know? no, definitely not. Yeah. So, um, uh, some other trends, I, I think, of course, AI, you know, it's going to continue to grow. My wife actually works for an AI uh, company, the, the AI email marketing. Okay. And they're growing like crazy. They've actually just branched out like a couple years ago into a lot of different verticals now. Wow. That's just going to continue to grow uh, yeah. you know, with bots and things like that. And hopefully it gets a little better. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I still think market automation has a lot of room to grow too. And I think uh, you got, I mean, five, six years ago, those tools were so expensive and you had the infusion softs of the world, uh, mm -hmm. and Marketo and, and things like that. And they, they're great tools. They're more, I mean, infusion soft, they pitch themselves as a small business tool, but it's still pretty expensive. Uh -huh. you know, you're in a lot of money for that. Um, but I think, you know, in the long, long run, it, it pays for itself. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of smaller businesses, they don't want to fork up that money. Yeah. Uh, so, but all these other tools that I mentioned earlier, the active campaigns, even Entreport, Entreport's a great tool, huh. uh, especially if you're doing e-commerce. Um, but um, those and Autopilot and Drip, they're really inexpensive. I mean, you start an Autopilot, um, I think you get a thousand followers, it's 25 bucks a month. Yeah, that's um, good. That's good. Yeah, as you grow your list, of course, it gets more expensive and it, you know, it can be pretty pricey, but even you get to a point where you've got, you know, 15,000 contacts in there and you're still only paying like $400 a month. Yeah. And if you got a list that big, you're probably doing some pretty good business out of it if you've, if you've actually grown the list the right way. Yeah. So, but I still think a lot of that's going to continue to grow because it's, they're making it easier. These tools are so, so much easier to use. It's not like in the past where you, you know, you'd have to like write everything out and just say, you know, this if then type statements. Now everything is visual, visual builders, you know, drag and drop this action. Uh, it's really cool and they make it really simple. So that's going to continue to grow as well. Um, so market automation does it kind of marketing, marketing yeah. automation. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, people need to scale and with their business and the once a quarter email is or newsletter is not going to cut it anymore. Yeah. Um, and you, you know, for us, what we do, uh, 
you know, it's it's a good tool to have in our box because these people don't really have time to do that. You know, yeah. I can sit there and I can I can develop a, an automation campaign. Uh, I mean, just lay it out basically in about 30 minutes. And of course, you got to put the content in and stuff. But yeah. for someone who doesn't understand it, you know, even though it's gotten a lot easier, it's going to take them a while. So they don't really have the time to do it. So I think for SEO and or digital marketing type companies, I think that's going to be a, a good way to grow. In fact, one of the groups I'm a, part, I'm a member of, uh, actually two of them, two marketing groups, they're both talking about that right now. One of them is talking about a, um, it's kind of like a um, client partner, or excuse me, a partner system with one of these market automation tools, mm -hmm. which is Hackbuck. And the other one, we actually have a, a call this Thursday, and it's a presentation by Active Campaign. So they're they're really kind of pushing this because they feel also that market automation is going to continue to grow. Hmm. Yeah, that sounds interesting. I mean, with all these tools, I think they've really helped um, freelancers and small business owners to kind of do uh, a lot of the just secretarial work to, uh, you know, even technical stuff that, you know, before years ago, you would need a hosting company. You And then before that, you would need like an engineer, you know, and all this stuff. And, and they've cut away those layers so that now oh, yeah. freelancers can just do what they need to do um, closer to it, at least from a business perspective. And oh, yeah. with pay, payroll is kind of the one that needs to be improved, I think. Um, that's there's still a lot of opportunity there for uh, businesses to improve that. But you know, QuickBooks and stuff like that, uh, FreshBooks has made it easy for invoices and, and doing just business stuff. But as long as yeah. digital marketers and SEOs remain like technical and um, just focused on providing value, you know, you can keep going with it because, like you said earlier, people are when they look into this stuff and they find out all the work that you have to do, you know, to, to actually do it, it is a lot of stuff and a lot of cost and everything. I mean, SEM rush alone is like 99 bucks a month if you're just buying it, which is, you know, the base plan. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's a fair investment, you know, for, for, you know, small business and stuff like that. And then on top of that, you have to know what the heck it means. Yeah, and so. I, I've been playing with that. I've had a, an account with them. In fact, I'm on the um, the two hundred dollar month plan now because I have more clients in there. But uh, yeah, there's still so many sections of that that I just yeah I, mean, I love to find the time to learn. I'm sure it's useful, and, mm -hmm. and they just keep coming out with new stuff. I you know I see that little beta uh, badge pop up. I'm like, oh my god, something new. Yeah, I mean, I've got to learn. Yeah, but, the uh, it's an amazing tool, but. I'm always calling them the help desk and kind of saying like, "What's this?" or "I'm or I want to do this. I want to do X. Is, do you have something that does that?" And usually they do, which is really cool. Um, yeah. You know, they've helped me with some issues with like listings management, which has been helpful. They integrate yeah, with Yex, so that. that's been yep, really I just good. Just started using that, and I I can't even find someone to contact because the question I have, and you may know the answer to this, is is that like Yex where. I've heard, you know, you stop using them and basically your citations go away. I can't imagine that would happen. Mm -hmm. I think it's just you don't have access to them to update mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Uh, but my concern with that, and this is, you know, I'm, I'm testing out on one client right now with uh, through SEM Rush, but, um, you know, with some of these other tools you have where you get somebody to do it, you, you have logins to these accounts and you have a whole list of them. Yeah. So – how do you get? How do you gain access to that? Let's say you're using Yext or this SEM Rush, and then six months down the road, your client says, "I don't want to use it anymore." And let's say the citations do stay, but maybe you want to update them at some point. I mean, how do you even log into that account? You know, it, do you have to go back to Yext? Well, you mean within um, as long as it's within SEM Rush, because they kind of treat it separate. Yeah. So, like, if you're doing, are you talking about? Doing it from within SEM Rush from the listings well, management. Yeah, like right now, let's say I've got I've got one client I'm testing out with the SEM Rush version. Yeah, uh, it works with EX. And let's say six months from now, they're like, well, we don't want we don't want you to do that anymore. I, I don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. And they're like, hey, or maybe they stop working with me. And they're like, hey, well, you know, a month later they contact me and say we need to update this citation on this site. Oh yeah. What do we do? Because <laughs> like a lot of times when you get people to do these citations or other tools you are given a login. They're like, here's your login for Yelp or here's your login for mm -hmm. you know, Squarespace or whatever, not Squarespace, but Foursquare. Yeah. Um, 
but you don't get that with these other with like uh, the SDM REST version or uh, YEX. So I'm just curious as to how that works. Yeah, I mean YEX has been really good for me because I've been able to use it with my clients without needing all of those logins. So yeah. it can just kind of go in like under the rug, so to speak, and just go into Yelp. It can go into, you have to input the Google My Business usually, but or like link it or something. But for the most part, it, it can just go in. And then yeah. I, have, cool. I have to call, I have to call SEM Rush though every time I uh, cancel an account though because I might have clients to do it for a few months and then we stop it um, and then yeah you can just go back and basically you have to set it up again yeah. at that point but it's it's easy um, on the, in that sense it's not one of yeah. the disadvantages though is if you have multiple locations there have been some issues with me in the past of trying to get those types of things synced um, where yeah. basically I had to just call Google directly, Google uh, my business to like merge accounts and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, but, that's what I'm getting ready to do with this one client I'm testing out. They've got two locations, so uh, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and nice. then the other trend I think is really, uh, you know, keyword intent. So it's just more mm -hmm. topic based, you know, to yeah. instead of just focusing just on the keywords is like, what are these people coming up with terms that really connect with what they're looking for? Um, yeah. Because I mean, this is something, you know, as an SEO person, um, you know, you start looking like I new potential client I have. It's like they're getting a, a lot of, they're getting like 1.7, like organic search hits a month. But then you look on their site when, why they're getting these things. And one of the words they're ranking for has nothing to do with them. Mm -hmm. you know, but it doesn't matter if you're getting a thousand sites visits a month for that one word because those people are never going to buy what you're offering. Yeah. They're not the right people. So that's kind of the pitch to them is like we need to focus more on what these people are actually intending to find, you know. Yeah. Um, so so that's kind of uh, – and in fact, one of my other clients are like, oh, our keyword, you know, it looks like our site traffic went down. And I'm like, yeah, but look where it went down. It was the, those two keywords that have nothing to do with what you guys do. Yeah. And so that's a good thing. You know? Yeah, I mean, it is hard to say to a client if it if stuff did trend down, even if maybe bounce rate was lowered, and then you know, and then there's more pages and stuff like that. Um, but seeing like actual numbers of yeah, but there's less people, you know, <laughs> like it's still it's still like it doesn't go through the brain quite <laughs> for some reason. Well, yeah, I think that uh, go ahead. I was about to say this one client of mine. I mean, there it's the um, the clinic the. Ayurvedic clinic and they their their name is also the name of a famous uh, Indian actor uh, I mean, yeah I'm not even sure but you know it's like yeah how do you know these people I mean why would someone just type in that one name to find your clinic <laughs> right I, I kind of am that way for a new client that I have onboarded and he was really excited about this new uh, website he got and he's like, I can't believe it was open. And, you know, we got it. And then I was like, yeah, that's that's really cool. And then, like, later, like, recently I did a little search on it. And it's basically taken from another, like, a, a different domain. Has the same name. Oh, yeah. And it's the same kind of business. And they already are tracking. And so it's going to be, like, kind of tough, you know? Yeah. It's not as easy as first thought. Just because the domain yeah. is there. And there's all these, like, um, you know... Uh, domain names that, that are so different now from uh, .tv, .photo, .whatever that have opened up, .us, yeah. that, I yeah. that sometimes business owners get excited because, like, Google. you know, <laughs> something, yeah. FS is open or whatever. It's like, don't even bother, you know, or yeah. Google, Google TV, .tv or something. So yeah. stuff like that is is something to be weary of. Um, and then another trend I think is uh, basically social media integration with SEO. Yeah. Like ongoing. So I think like I've noticed more of my clients are coming to me realizing they want to better understand social media. They want to better utilize it because they know there's a, a pool out there of customers. Yeah. But I think there's so many barriers or they just do a Facebook update. They don't 
realize it only reaches like 5% of their followers like you you kind of have to either boost or do different things to actually get it out there you know yeah. so that's a that's a big one i think that will grow people are starting yeah. to get that it's you know kind of a big deal yeah and it ranks i think on the google ranking factors i think it's you know maybe like number 10 so it's kind of low down but you know 10's better mm -hmm. than 100 on the ranking yeah. factors and yeah. as someone who I start off my company as a social media marketing company, I'm still into it, you know. Uh -huh. um, in fact, I I really kind of I tell people that's got to be part of your package, you know. Mm. It's I mean we and a couple clients I'm just doing like this uh, this these growth programs we offer. I just throw it in because it's like we just need to get people to your site. So Instagram, Twitter, you know, we're able to not only grow their account with targeted uh, connections, but we send messages out. And the messages, you know, we never try to be salesy, but usually they include yeah. a link to get it back to the website. Yeah. Um, and one of my previous clients, I mean, the majority of her site traffic was coming from her Instagram account from those messages. You know, we're talking about just from a small account, like a couple hundred hits a month. Wow. But these people are interested in what she sells. Yeah. So uh, that's a way to use it as well. It's not really for the SEO, but you know what? When Google sees people coming from Instagram, Clicking on your URL and going to your website, I just think that helps. Yeah. Long term, it really starts. I mean, anything you can, anything you can do to add to the to your SEO clout or whatever you want to call it, is going to help. Um, your clout so, score. Yeah. 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 Remember that company? Yeah, I that for a long time. <laughs> yeah, I do. That was uh, it. Was interesting idea. It was yeah. like social currency, kind yeah. of, but. Uh, yeah, it, it kind of, I don't know, it, obviously it, it fizzled out, um, but it, social is a big one, and I think for SEO, it's always very important. Like, I have some clients that are interested in uh, doing more with Instagram and Facebook and stuff like that. I personally, you know, I kind of always say just, you know, kind of go with the one you really like and just start getting comfortable with it and doing posts and because that's better than like nothing at all. You know what I mean? Right. Or like, so if some clients are really good with Facebook or maybe they're good with Instagram, I personally really like Twitter. And yeah. so I just like, you know, tweeting out and doing stuff like that. And um, there's ways to get new customers from any platform, you know, like you can do it from, from them all. So I'm all about just, just try it and see what happens. Even like YouTube is, is really fun. It's a new, um, somewhat newer platform for me to use and then now i'm integrating that with video because it works yeah, well with right. uh yeah. google ads and stuff like that too and so offering videos to my clients i partnered up with a local photographer who's really great and we're going to do more videos because clients have kind of expressed interest in in doing that and it is a good form that i do see trending in the future like more video yeah. so oh yeah definitely um, but yeah, Twitter has been my kind of my platform for a long time because I, I was in sales for a long time and it was all B2B sales. Yeah. And, you know, I was pretty heavy into Twitter and I actually have a couple clients right now that I've actually acquired through Twitter. Twitter. So nice. it's been pretty good. But you yeah. got to know how to do it. And my, you know, I don't tell people so much, um, you know, just do what you want to do, which platform you like. It's like, let's determine which platform where your potential clients are. Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that is a Twitter, good one. Yeah, you know, Twitter's considered to be more of a B two B platform, but you can do the B two C on there as well. Mm -hmm. Different industries it works for, um, but you know, if there's a little chance you might get somebody, why not just do it? You know, yeah. if, uh, you might as well. Yeah, I mean, so, don't don't get me wrong. I definitely say to my clients looking at the Google Analytics, what is converting and stuff like that. Usually, it's either Facebook or Instagram, are are usually the ones. Um, I think I've noticed the most interest from probably like Facebook with customers just posting and being interested in it. But I think there's a lot of opportunity like for YouTube and maybe some others that they just don't do, you know? Yeah. And it, cause that is kind of a big, it, it is like a time commitment with video and editing and stuff like that. And a lot of people probably just don't know what to do. Um, yeah. but I think there's potential yeah. there. Oh, definitely. Yeah. In fact, I'm going to 
I, that's something I would keep forgetting because I need to learn a little more about uh, uh, YouTube SEO. I mean, they're owned by Google, so you know, you know, yeah. it's going to be important. Um, but that's something we need to kind of I need to up my game on a little more and learn a little more about it. So they say second largest search platform in the world. Yep, exactly. Uh, so there are a lot of searches definitely, you know, going on, and it is interesting to get into metrics. I have a a few customers that do heavy uh, YouTube advertising, and one is a motivational speaker, and okay. he was also um, approached me about doing uh, podcasting. So that could be exciting for 2019. We're going to work together to um, to do uh, basically like his own podcast show. Yeah. That's great. I've kind of gotten into podcasts again also. Um, um, I mean, they're just, they're easy. Yeah. You know, walks in the morning, it's a 10 minute podcast. I'll listen to a few of those while I'm walking. Yeah. Um, and just learning. Um, but yeah, I think that's gonna be pretty big. In fact, um, I know another person who really just kind of put his, pushing his other job away and just focusing on the podcast and, wow. uh, you know, interviewing people. And I don't know how he's going to monetize it, but um, that's really what he wants to do. That's really he, cool. He just kind of looking at the data and seeing that it's trending up. Ooh. So uh, definitely something. Nice. I yeah. Don't know, I don't know how, you know, promote that all that well. I mean, social right. media is one that's been, I think that's been pretty common to promote it on social media. Um, yeah. But well, oh, there's, the SEO stuff. from what I've looked at, there's different options for syndication. Um, Lib Sin. I forget the exact name of it, but it's basically a network that you can subscribe to and it helps like syndicate the podcast out and yeah. stuff like that. And then there's, you know, with feeds and different things like that as well and getting it on iTunes and then just kind of promoting it is, you know, half the battle. Um, yeah. And being consistent as with yeah, anything. Or, or using SEO. I mean, I know one person yeah. that runs a market agency. She's kind of a offers a bunch of courses. I think that's her focus now. Cool. But uh, you know, I found her through. Actually, I found her originally through. Uh, uh, I always pronounce this wrong, but Udemy. Udemy. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I just a little course, and yeah. um, I took it. So it was pretty interesting. And oh, she has a link to a podcast, so I check it out. Start listening to it. Really, really good stuff. Nice. Um, so, for, but from that. You know, I went to her uh, her course page and then signed up for a course. And I'm still I've been doing it for a while. Wow! Um, it's not the cheapest thing, but I get a, a ton of value out of it, and it's really helped me with my business. Uh, but it was kind of interesting, you know. She, but a lot of people find her just through search because she has landing pages set up for that. Okay. So that may be the way to do it for podcast. You know, just get people to find you via search for certain topics. Yeah. And then subscribe to your podcast, but then you can spin that off into something else you're, you're offering. And I think being very detailed on the show notes is really important because yeah. that, that gives you a lot of time for optimization. Oh, if, yeah, if you just put all the stuff you talked about or whatever, um, obviously it takes time, but that would be a good one. So, uh, yeah, this was really great. I really enjoyed talking with you, Kurt. Um, yeah. is there anything you want to say like for maybe we both can just list off website and follow us different places, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, we're at engaged digital.com. Um, or you can find us on Twitter at engaged S M M. Um, that's kind of the, the big areas we play around with, but, um, we've, as I said earlier, we focus on really the beauty aesthetics type industry. Uh, but we work with clients in other industries as well. Um, and we build systems, you know, I like to build a complete system. Some people have one thing working, they need something else and, uh, we can kind of complete the, the puzzle. That's, that's, <laughs> I'm a puzzle, a nice. puzzler, I should say a puzzle doer. So nice. that's kind of the way I look at my business. I don't ever go in with a canned like program or whatnot. It's like, let's find out what works for you, what you need, where the holes are and let's fix them. Awesome. Um, so yeah, my name is Ted. Follow me on, uh, Twitter and Facebook and, uh, uh, at cow abundant with a K and then my website's cowabundant.com with a K. Um, and if you are local in like Ohio or central Ohio, check me out. Um, if you're not, then just check out my blog or follow me. Uh, I like Instagram too. So 
all that good stuff about SEO, Google ads, um, you know, optimization and, and, uh, that that's what I do. So, uh, thanks Kurt for, uh, yeah. talking. Yeah, it was nice fun. Chatting with you. Nice catching up and chatting with you again. And, uh, let's talk soon. Awesome. All right. I'm going to stop this live stream here.